my great-grandmother died in Auschwitz. Her daughter, my great-aunt, was also in Auschwitz and she actually survived. My great-uncle, uh, who's still alive now, survived a different concentration camp. He weighed just 70 pounds as a, a grown man. It was because of them and their experiences during the war in the Holocaust that I knew that I was Jewish and uh, couldn't imagine myself not being Jewish. My sense of Jewishness came much more from my heritage. Before I began following Jesus, my only interest in the Bible, I have to admit, was to use its pages to uh, roll up cigarettes. We would go to a synagogue, not very often, but uh, for the high days and holy days. But then the next day we would eat bacon and we would enjoy it. And we didn't feel that we were doing anything particularly disobedient. That was just how we were as Jews. My father is quite a, a well-known politician in Britain, uh, Michael Howard. For a while, he was the leader of the Conservative Party and fought the 2005 general election against Tony Blair. People say that young people think they're immortal, invincible, and they're never going to die. But for me, it wasn't like that. I was very conscious of death. My thoughts would turn to the inevitability of death and how that made everything pointless. I knew that after I died, whenever I did die, I would just be completely forgotten. And it bothered me a huge amount when I was 13, 14, 15, to the point where occasionally it made me extremely depressed, just no joy in anything. And uh, it weighed very heavily on me. The preparation classes for my bar mitzvah had left me cold. They were very uh, lacking in answers to life's big questions. I hoped that there was some kind of explanation, something that would make sense of life. During this time when I was most upset about death and its inevitability, uh, I found I would have very happy dreams. It was as if real life was black and white, while the, the dreams were in color. It didn't really help during the bleak daytime experience. Apart from, it did give me a sense of hope. There must be some kind of hope, some kind of explanation, something that will make sense of the wonderfulness of the world. One day I went to hear a talk at school. Here are people who think they have answers and I would like to find out what those answers are. The speaker there quoted Jesus saying, just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the son of man must be lifted up that anyone who believes in him may have eternal life. My eyes popped out of my head and I was gripped by every word he said because he was talking about eternal life. So I went up to him after the talk and said, this sounds, this sounds great, this sounds amazing, um, but uh, I'm Jewish, so uh, I suppose it's not for me. I just, I couldn't see myself breaking with my Jewish heritage. He said, that's not a problem at all. Jesus was Jewish. He's the Jewish Messiah, the promised Messiah of Israel. He's the one the Jewish people were waiting for for centuries. This uh, problem of death and oblivion was solved when I began following Jesus and received eternal life. I knew that there was a history of Christians persecuting Jews. Did Jesus himself want that persecution to happen? Well, of course not. To follow the Jewish Messiah, the promised Messiah, that is the most Jewish thing that anyone can do. There is nothing more Jewish than following your own Messiah. You might imagine that someone who is only ever good would be maybe, maybe a little boring, but it's not the case with Jesus. He is good, but not in a, in a dull way. He's always getting into interesting situations. He's always saying extraordinary things which you can think about for days. And he is magnetic.